This is Redskin Chief George Trading Horse Allen. He has built winning teams in Los Angeles and now Washington by dealing off untried draft choices for savvy veterans, and his system works. The Redskins are the oldest team in the league with a roster that includes two rookies, two more than usual for Allen, and 24 of 40 members with six years or more in the NFL. New England head coach John Mazur has just the opposite situation. He has 13 rookies on his squad and just four players with more than six years experience, yet the Patriots are a coming team. Thus far this season, the Pats have played like a young team, being beaten badly the first week, but coming back to beat Atlanta 21-20 last week when the Falcons blew a 10-yard field goal in the game's waning moments. So there's no need to pity the Pats, though in the offensive and defensive starting lineups, Redskin players total 77 more years pro experience. The Patriots are young, but they are good. One young star who will not see action is running back Carl Garrett, number 30, out with an injury. But the brightest star in the Patriots' Milky Way will. He's quarterback Jim Plunkett, last season's Rookie of the Year, who was picked up in his second season, where he left off in his first. George Allen has stuck with Billy Kilmer as his quarterback, despite the fact that Sonny Jurgensen is healthy again, and Kilmer has kept the Redskins winning, though there's dynamite on the bench. So it's George Allen's veterans versus John Mazur's young toughs. It's a classic matchup of youthful exuberance versus veteran pride as the Washington Redskins face the New England Patriots in the NFL Game of the Week. The Redskins put their heads together at the start of the game and came up with a play designed to take advantage of the Patriots' hard-charging youth. Kilmer's play fake to Larry Brown, number 43, caught New England run conscious and freed Roy Jefferson. But Jefferson could not catch up to the ball. Not to be outdone, on the Patriots' first play from scrimmage, Plunkett cranked up a long one. But a well-covered 5'10", Randy Rabbit Vataw never had a chance against 5'9", Pat Fisher. But this was not to be the Patriots' game plan. All game long, Plunkett probed the Redskin middle, testing their creaky, crafty zone. The Patriots' first drive was halted by good Redskin defense, but also stopped when Plunkett, the franchise, hit Bob Harpo Gladjo, but Harpo dropped the ball. Their second drive was nearly halted before it got started when a long pass over the middle to Vataha was nullified by a penalty. In the offseason, Vataha is bashful, one of Snow White's seven dwarfs at Disneyland, but he is not at all bashful about running middle routes where the hits come hardest. The Patriots overcame the penalty when Plunkett rolled left away from the pressure and threw on the run with his right, a quarterback's most difficult pass. Gladjo made up for his earlier case of no hands. Gladjo also did some hard running and gave notice that Harpo, so named because of his physical resemblance to Harpo Marx, is ready to let his football ability speak for him. But the Patriots' second drive was halted by the Redskin defense, a defense that averages nine years per player. Their third drive would reach the Redskin 16, but Plunkett, still going over the middle, threw low to tight end Bob Windsor. Part of Plunkett's success has been his mixing of his receivers, rarely going to the same man twice in succession. But when he got Windsor open again, this time on an out pattern, he missed him. The Patriots had to settle for a field goal try by Charlie Gogolak, number seven, but his chippy from the 23 missed, perhaps because it was his first try of the season, having signed a 1972 contract 11 o'clock the night before. The Patriots had controlled the first quarter, but came away empty. The Redskins' strategy was less complicated. Simply give the ball to league-leading runner Larry Brown, but the Patriots were ready. 
Led by Dennis Wurgoski, number 70, the Patriot defensive line stopped Brown and running mate Charlie Haraway and yielded just 21 yards total offense in the first quarter. So early in the second quarter, Kilmer changed his strategy and his pass to tight end Mac Alston, only his second completion of the game, gained 36 yards. A repeat shows that Pat linebacker Ron Axe, number 51, was blitzing, but picked up by Charlie Haraway, number 31, and forced to play man-to-man -man because of the blitz. The New England secondary was outmanned. Haraway's chop block on Axe had enabled Kilmer to get the pass off, and it is Haraway's blocking for Kilmer and Larry Brown that makes him perhaps the Redskins' most valuable offensive player, though certainly one of its least storied. Alston carried the Redskins into New England territory for the first time, and Kilmer, behind Walter Rock's block on Julius Adams, number 85, the Patriots' best pass rusher, spotted Charlie Taylor in the right side of the end zone. On the play, a penalty flag was thrown. A repeat shows why. Kilmer did nothing fancy. He merely hung it out for Taylor. Taylor had beaten his man badly, and Larry Carwell had no choice but to interfere. Despite the interference, Taylor had done his thing and made a great catch. Then he did his thing some more. Washington led 7-0. The mark of the Redskin resurgence has been their ability to strike quickly by taking advantage of breaks. And on the Patriots' next play from scrimmage, they got one. Jack Maitland, number 40, from Williams College, fumbled. And the ball rolled right to Richie Pettibone, number 16. And the Redskins were in business again, this time on the New England 17. Kilmer moved the skins to the fore and again hit Taylor, and again Taylor did his thing. The Redskins had struck quickly and lethally. In less than three minutes, Kilmer had hit Taylor for two scores and had Washington ready to blow the game open as they now led 14-0. But here, Plunkett and the Pats showed why many top them as one of the best young teams in football. A 40-yard pass and run to Reggie Rucker made up most of a 12-play, 83-yard drive. 30 more yards were gouged out by rookie Josh Ashton from Tulsa. had won a starting assignment for his play against Atlanta. And now, with Carl Garrett out, his burden is that much heavier. From the two-yard line, Ashton brought the Patriots back to 14-7. The Patriots had refused to fold. Though the Redskins had struck for two quick scores, the New Englanders were not demoralized. They had come back against one of pro football's best defenses and were now still very much in the game. The Redskins were not about to give up either, and with three and a half minutes to go in the first half, they drove once more. Larry Brown began his drive for a third consecutive 100-yard game, but then the young Patriots got tough. Washington reached the Patriot 28-yard line, but then Brown had the ball swiped by number 66, Ed Wysokowski, who is no relation to Dennis Wirgoski. Ex-Redskin Ricky Harris recovered, and the Patriots had staved off the Redskins' last first-half chance. They had played Washington even, and in fact, New England now seemed to have momentum on their side for the second half. Down by seven at the half, Plunkett quickly drove the Patriots to the tying touchdown, with Bataha and Ashton again providing the impetus. Ashton greatly resembles Larry Brown in style, picking his hole, then quickly moving through it or around it. 
The success of the outside run is dependent on removing the cornerback. And on a repeat, we can see how the Patriots did it. Number 29, cornerback Ted Vactor read the play, then came up to contain it. But the Patriots guard, Len St. Jean, number 60, simply turned him in. And Ashton instinctively went to the outside and consumed the rest of the 27 yards on his own. When Plunkett found he could run on the Redskins, he continued by trapping him up the middle, and Bob Gladjo took it to the 11. But Plunkett mixed his plays beautifully. Two runs, then a play-action pass for a touchdown to number 33, Reggie Rucker. On a repeat, again watch the Redskins, number 29, Ted Vactor. He didn't go for the fake. But he also didn't keep up with his man Rucker, who blew by him with a quick move to the inside. Plunkett's protection gave him time to spot and hit Rucker right in the hands. And the game was tied at 14 on the Patriots' opening series of the third quarter. The running of Ashton and the passing of Plunkett moved the Patriots across midfield on their next possession, with the Patriots line again able to move and contain the strong Redskin front four on the run and the pass. Plunkett found that short passes over the middle worked well against the Redskin zone, and he would exploit this area all day. Tight end, Bob Windsor, number 86, would also play a big role in the success of this strategy. Windsor has always been a top flight receiver, first with the 49ers, now with New England. But the drive was halted on the next play, when an option pass from Gladjo to Bataha was intercepted. Bataha had the secondary beaten, but the pass wasn't far enough, and Mike Bass, number 41, literally stole it away from the rabbit. Bass then went about 200 yards, good for a 29-yard return, back to the place where the play started, at midfield. Redskins were unable to move on their first break of the second half as Kilmer soon went for all of it and came up empty. Kilmer thought he had Larry Brown by the defense, but he failed to see Larry Carwell, who had plucked the ball clean and gave the Patriots offense their third possession of the quarter. Carwell, Adams, Wysokowski, Wurgowski. Not exactly household words, but this who's he defense of the Patriots was slowly making itself known. The Patriots' first interception of the game and of the year led to Jim Plunkett and the Patriots taking the lead. The big kid from Stanford in two years has become amazingly adept at staying in the pocket till the last possible instant, then throwing frozen ropes to his receivers, all of whom have to have great hands to handle Plunkett's rifle shots. But three plays failed from here, and Charlie Gogolak put one through from 42, a field goal that would look quite large in retrospect. Gogolak's first of the year. The third quarter ended with the Patriots ahead, 17-14. With the Redskins down by three, Kilmer and Larry Brown led Washington to a go-ahead touchdown to open the frantic final period. Watch the Redskins line open the hole for Brown, who is perhaps the most accomplished runner in the league at spotting, then bursting through a hole. Gliding into the secondary, Brown picked up 36 yards on this play and would gain over 100 for the third straight week.
Brown had great success going up the middle. He was not as fortunate trying to go outside. So Kilmer returned to the air and went for his favorite target, Charlie Taylor. Having all day to find him, Kilmer spotted and hit Taylor at the back of the end zone. But look at Taylor's feet, clearly over the line. A heel away from a touchdown. This brought up a third down from the nine. And this time, Kilmer was successful, hitting Jerry Smith for the score. On a repeat of the play, watch linebacker Jim Shyansky, number 50. No relation to Ed Wysokoski. He should have decked Jerry Smith, who played off him, then cleared to the right and beat Clarence Scott to the ball. It was Jerry Smith's third catch of the year. All three have been touchdowns, and it put Washington ahead 21-17. But the lead didn't last long. Led by Plunkett and the rookie from Tulsa, Josh Ashton, the Patriots were able to move easily through a defense that is considered one of the league's best. The key to this go-ahead drive was the medium-range passes to tight end Windsor and the protection Plunkett received from his line. Len Kytus, St. Jean, Neville, Morris, and Montler, five men who deserve much credit for the Patriots' success thus far this season. But it was a great individual effort by Plunkett that got the score. Fending off a hard rush, Plunkett showed his strength, firing on the run. The man on the receiving end was Josh Ashton, and the Patriots suddenly were in the lead again. Number 31, that's Josh Ashton. Remember his name. Ashton's dazzling performance today, over 100 yards rushing and this touchdown catch, had helped put New England on top 24-21 with four minutes to play. Kilmer got most of it back on one play. The bomb to Taylor took it to the 25. Then Kilmer tried three straight passes and on third down thought he had six points. But Roy Jefferson was ruled out of the end zone. It was now fourth and ten from the 25 and with a minute and a half to play, George Allen's only call is the field goal which will tie it. Kurt Knight's kick was good. But the score will never change. The Patriots were detected running into the kicker. Five yards and an automatic first down. George Allen decides to take the penalty and give back the three points. An unorthodox decision for the consistently conservative Allen. But the Redskins fail to make any headway on the next three downs as the Patriots contain Larry Brown to the outside and Kilmer failed on two passes. It's now fourth and nine from the 20. Again, Kurt Knight comes in to tie, but this time he misses. Coach John Mazur watched as the Patriots offense too failed to move and they had to punt with a minute left. Number 24, Bill Malinchak, blocked the punt cleanly. And he and Bob Brunet made a mad scramble to get the ball before it or they are out of the end zone. Malinchak covered it, but was ruled not to have possession in the end zone, thus giving the Redskins a safety instead of a touchdown. On a repeat of the play, we can see how tough a judgment call really is. This one, which made it 24-23 Patriots, meant the difference between victory and defeat. The Patriots then kicked to the Redskins, and 
Kilmer had time for a few plays to get them back into good field goal position again, but he couldn't move them past the Patriots 42 as Carwell tipped his pass incomplete on third down. So with only time for one play, the Patriots nervously watched Kurt Knight come in for the third time in a minute to try and win it from 50 yards. The ball is nowhere to be seen. It was wide to the right, no good, and set off a chain of unusual reactions from the gleeful Patriots. An incredible series of events had given the New England Patriots their second straight upset over supposedly far superior opposition. They beat Atlanta on a missed field goal in the final seconds, and this victory over the Redskins was a deja vu. But both were fashioned on more than luck. The Patriots are hitting on defense and have an explosive offense with a dynamic quarterback capable of anything. And at long last, talk of a Patriot championship may no longer be banned in Boston.